SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. Our top story is prosecutors explain their decision to seize a Shabin and Gale fails to answer questions regarding the lease. Good afternoon. The National Director of Public Prosecution says forfeiture is the only option left to shut down a large-scale Shabin operating at Athlone in the Western Cape. The Shabin owners, a couple who admit to operating an illegal Shabin from their home, say that forfeiting their property would be draconian and would leave them and their children without a roof over their heads. The matter is being argued in the Constitutional Court. Candace Klein has more. Police raided the illegal Shabin many times and arrested 18 people, including the owners. In most instances, they would simply pay an admission of guilt fine and continue the illegal operation. The NDPP says this is because the Shabin proved to be very profitable. The NDPP's lawyer, Jeff Budlinder, argued this is a large-scale operation pointing to the confiscation of large amounts of liquor. He says police resources were simply stretched to the limit and the only option now is to forfeit the means of the crime. The Centre for Child Law argued that forfeiture should not be granted until there is an independent assessment of the effects of this on the couple's young children. Kant's Klein, SABC News, Johannesburg. South Africa needs to have a mandatory 50-50 representation of women on political party candidate lists if gender equality is to be achieved in the country. This is the proposal at a roundtable discussion to celebrate International Women's Day. The discussion is being led by the Commission for Gender Equality and National Democratic Institute in Johannesburg. Stakeholder groups have suggested that amendments need to be made to the Electoral Act, the Municipal Electoral Act and the Municipal Structures Legislating 50-50 Representation and disallowing a political party to register the elections if it does not meet this criteria. CGE Commissioner Janine Hicks says women's participation in all spheres of life can be expedited by putting women in positions where they can make decisions. Research has shown, whether that's in the region or internationally, that the single best way to transform women's political representation is a combination, a quota system, and a proportional representation system. Why is that? Because patriarchy is so deeply embedded in our societies, and those obstacles and discrimination against women to compete and engage and advance politically are rough. So without a quota system or without the PR system, we're not going to see the transformation. After last year's local government elections, Independent Electoral Commission CEO Pansit Lakula spoke out on the need for a legislated quota system to ensure gender parity on list of candidates. The ANC is the only political party which has voluntarily adopted the 50-50 gender party, a rather gender parity rule. Suspended Police Commissioner Becky Kele has denied he authorised any meeting between the head of procurement and property mogul Rushabangu. He's testifying at the Board of Inquiry into allegations of corruption and maladministration against him. He says he only authorised the process to seek new accommodation for the SAPS and was not aware that Deputy National Commissioner Hamilton Klela was only investigating one building. Gale came under fire after public protector Tuli Maronsela found that his role in the 1.7 billion rand leases for police headquarters in Pretoria and Durban was unlawful. Gale failed to answer several questions regarding the lease. Pumzile Mlangeni reports. Kale has told the Board of Inquiry that he didn't see the need to ask questions regarding the price of other buildings and also found it unnecessary to compare prices. He says he assumed by looking at the documents that the price was competitive and so no need to investigate other prices for other buildings. When the Board asked him how much SAPS paid for rent at their current building, he failed to give the correct amount. Pumzilim Langini, SAPC News. Pretoria. Eastern Cape Police have arrested more than 50 residents of Mnyolo village for allegedly disrupting traffic on the R61 between Mtata and Ngobo. The residents are protesting against poor service delivery in the area. Traffic came to a standstill when they placed burning tires and logs on the road. They say their councillors promised them tar roads, electricity and sanitation. But nothing's happened, the community leader explains. Our demands is electrification, water articulation, tearing off our road, that is T28, which connects from R61 to Yugi, sanitation, those are our four demands. No service delivery whatsoever. The Khatek Department of Education says it's still gathering statistics to gauge the impact of yesterday's strike action on schools, but indications are that up to 25% of teachers didn't pitch for work. Department spokesperson Charles Pantlane. From the statistics that we've gathered up to so far, they indicate that between 10 and 25% of educators were not at their workstations yesterday. 
some schools, in fact schools in the suburban areas were not affected. The examinations that were set for yesterday, these are supplementary examinations in the Nguni languages, were not affected. And in terms of scholar transport, this was not affected. The number of Germans visiting the province of Kuzulu Natal has increased by 20% since the 2010 Soccer World Cup held in the country. That's according to the International Tourism Trade Fair currently underway in Germany. The leader of the Kuzulu Natal delegation to the trade fair, acting MEC for Economic Development and Tourism, Willis Kunu, says the culture, climate and other experiences makes the province a destination of choice. They see us as a province that has its own authenticity. Uh, a province with its own very peculiar, lovely climate, but also the contribution made by everybody else that was in the Natal is a destination of choice. We will work very hard over the next two years to promote what's in Natal and definitely lure the Germans to come to our province. Our top story at 1 o'clock, the National Director of Public Prosecution says forfeiture is the only option left to shut down a large-scale Shabin operating at Athlone in the Western Cape. More news at half past one.